Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today, we have Chris Rosini, our co-host. Chris, good to see you today. Great to be with you again, Dr. Paul. Good. We'll probably talk a little bit about economics. We'll probably talk about everything because we're going to be talking about do, do, do governments and does our government ever lie to us? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they sometimes you get punished if you lie in Washington. You can get kicked out of Congress. So uh, lying is a very serious matter. But we're going to be talking about lying in a broader sense. <laughs> you know, government reports and, and the, some philosophies that are based on lies. You know, our monetary system, you know, it is based, based on a lie. Uh, a lie that fiat money is equivalent to what the Constitution tells us. And we have seen tremendous gyrations here lately, gold way up and way down. And uh, it's, a, and it's not like this is the totally strange, uh, you know, in a fiat system. Matter of fact, it's part of that. But on the long term, things get ironed out because, as I've said many times, when I first started looking at this was before before we relied on own gold way back, uh, you know, in the 60s and the early 70s, and back back then. Uh, you know, gold, gold uh, when it was re-legalized was, you know, at $35 an ounce and till, uh, till it, we, that, that broke down and the Bretton Woods broke down. So this is, uh, this is something uh, been around a long time and they quit following the law. That, that is the main reason because the law and the Constitution said that only gold and silver uh, could be uh, legal tender. Uh, but th this is a, um, a, a system that was doomed to fail. We, we knew about it. It encourages way too much debt. It encourages people to invest in a, in a, in a, in a, in a negative way on making errors, and that's the malinvestment. They have to be corrected. They have to be ironed out, and that's what we're struggling through right now, but nobody really uh, talks about it. If they understand it, they want to hide from it because all the blame falls f falls on the people who demand inflation to keep their special interests going and the Fed cooperating. Uh, they, I never thought they were in, 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 in contest with each other. Like, who, who's really doing it? I think, uh, I think the uh, deep state does it. You know, the people who want the spending on a military industrial complex, a welfare state, and um, all the foreign aid. And, and they get together and they do this. So the gyrations we see now are, are very, very much part of that system. I remember when, when gold bro uh, bro broke loose from the uh, $35 an ounce and, uh, and we were allowed to own gold, it went from $35 and rapidly it went up to $150. And you say, well, that was a great buy. Well, everybody thought, well, the roof's blown off, 35 up to 150. So they, they thought that that was uh, uh, just oh, horrible. But there was rumors going around in the gold market. And they kept saying, 150. They now have enough gold if they would just quit spending. They could reinstitute the gold standard. And, uh, and yet, uh, the, that, what happened quickly after that, it went down to $90 and it was back in, in, in that mess that, that we have. And, but I, I, I find it fascinating because they actually thought, oh, well now we have gold at $150, we ought to be able to maintain that. So where are we now? $2,000. And uh, I'm, I'm anticipating and expecting uh, that the debt work that we're monetizing is going to control that and eventually the price of gold is going to double or triple over time. But the one thing is, is nobody knows exactly what will happen. But anyway, gold is very important. That's why we uh, partner with Birch Gold uh, Group. Uh, because that, that's what their business is. It's trying to get people invested and be able to hold metals because it's a little more complicated if you have an IRA uh, or some type of pension fund on what all the rules are. So we, uh, we partner with them and they're offering some information how you can convert usual assets into an IRA or a 401k. So what, uh, what you could do if you've not started with this and want to get a little bit more information, uh, you can t uh, text the number on the screen and that is Ron 989898. And uh, they will send you some material to uh, do their explaining on what they do in, in, their, in their business. But they, uh, they will 
uh, you, you know, not charge you for that. You can do that. So under these conditions today, I, I, I look for every source of information I can get, even though I, I think that, uh, you know, I've looked at it and I understand the history on all of this. There's still, and there's a lot of people have different interests. And the main reason why there's different opinions is you can't predict, you know, timing. You can predict that if we continue to do what we're doing in Washington, spending and printing money, there will be inflation, and that we can, we can expect that. And that is the reason if one, one wants to get a little bit more information, uh, consider very seriously taking and making a call. Uh, it's uh, texting, text RON at 989898, and they will send you some free information. Chris, we'll talk a little bit more, you know, about this whole system I mentioned a, a minute ago about, you know, it's based on a lot of lies. And, uh, it, it, you know, I, I uh, sort of poke fun at this whole thing that we did. Well, we're doing our job in Washington or our representatives are doing our job. We got rid of that guy that told lies. And I, I, I can't help but think, you know, a lot of people like him. And I think he was pulling a big joke on himself and everybody else but it's it's a little bit different he didn't do, he didn't go into a bank with a gun you know and and so it's it's really weird but he already has offers because he's an interesting character but uh, that but, but but that is lying but there's a lot of other kind of lying and the lies that we'll talk a little bit more about today are the lies told to maintain an empire and that that is uh, uh, so important because what happens is truth becomes the victim. You have to, be, to attack truth and eliminate because uh, truth is then becomes treasonous uh, in an empire. Empires are sacred. That's why they sound like empire. Emperors and kings and authoritarians, dictators and all, all of these things. So they uh, know that uh, the, the empire has to be protected at all costs. And that's what the struggle is. The recognition that the empire is on its way out, I think, is well known. So uh, a lot of people are working on it. So, but there's, there's a lot of things that we can't expect and we don't know about. So this is today, Chris, we want to talk about that. And I know you've given some thought on that, on, uh, uh, on telling the truth and why it's so important and why a republic and a, a country that believes in liberty doesn't function very well if you don't have a moral pe people who actually reckon, recognize that lying is bad, telling the truth is good. Chris? That's right, Dr. Paul. Yeah, and we're talking about nihilism, you know, this belief that there is no truth, uh, which in itself is self-contradictory. You know, if somebody comes to you and says there is no truth, they are stating it to you as if it's true. They believe that that is true, that there is no truth. And they're asking you to believe that it's true, that there is no truth. So they do believe in truth. And, uh, but these are tools of empire, nihilism. Uh, whenever you see somebody say, oh, that's my truth. No, it's your opinion. And it can be, your opinion can be true or it can be false. Uh, but again, these are tools of empire and I'll explain why. Uh, but going back to that my truth thing, you know, you didn't make this place. You were born into it. It was here before you, it will be here after you. You didn't make it, you didn't make yourself. So in that situation, you know, our job, I think, is to say, you know, what's the setup here? You know, our job is to, if we want to survive, learn what is true and what is false. And then, you know, we'll survive at the, at the minimum. You know, you don't walk in front of a car. It's true that it'll kill you. You know, don't put your hand on a hot stove. It's true that it will burn you. There is no my truth to this. Okay, now what's the purpose of this nihilism and my truth? It's because when you get into this mind virus, you become putty in the hands of the authoritarians. They become your source of truth. You know, you can't turn anywhere, but they, with their might, will tell you this is true because we say it's true. And that's what we went through with COVID. Remember when Fauci claimed to be the science and uh, what was it? Uh, New uh, New Zealand, Ardern, I believe, she says, we are the source of truth. Mm -hmm. And of course it was false, what they were saying, but that's the purpose of this nihilism, this my truth nonsense. And, uh, you know, and you got to get out of it. It's like a cult, <laughs> you know, and learn what is true 
so that you could at least survive and prosper. Right, and there's a lot of history that we can go by when you look about it. This is not a new, new problem that we're facing. <clears throat> it's been around in a long, long time. But nevertheless, it's very serious and uh, a lot of harm can come from sometimes war break out over these kind of things. But, you know, in order to maintain the empire, the, one of the first things that they have to do, and they're working diligently on this, and that is uh, they, they have to destroy the principles of the First Amendment. You, you just can't give out opinions. That's dangerous. And now it's, uh, uh, now it's announced by the enemy that uh, just saying something is violence. You know, the libertarian principles, you can't use any violence and you can't use aggression. But now they're saying verbal, verbaling, expressing yourself is a threat to people. And therefore, what you say is equivalent to holding up somebody with a gun. But the one thing they exclude is, uh, yes, they want the government to get involved in that and, uh, and describe all these things. But they, they never... They never apply these strict rules, which aren't just bad war, bad uh, uh, rules all together. What they what they do is they exclude the government. If you you and I can't do certain things, if we have to obey, uh, governments don't have to. They have they have the uh, power and the authority which people too often grant to them, and they don't uh, wake up quickly. And we're in the process of doing that, and then. The, the government then, uh, you know, uh, are overwhelmingly more powerful than the people, except there are some, there are some op, there is some opposition to that. And, and one, one of them is there is a higher law. There's still the majority of people believe in the higher law. You shouldn't lie, cheat and steal and kill. And uh, that's been there since uh, uh, Sumeria, you know, even well before the Ten Commandments. Those those rules have been there, and, uh, and and deep down in the heart of all these authoritarians who want to use all this power, power on their own, and the power they give the government, they know that. And uh, when things get bad, which they are, all of a sudden they'll start saying well, maybe we should be in this war. Maybe we should be more cautious right now. We're being more cautious about uh, expanding our role in the Middle East. We've been doing a lot, and they're talking about slowing up a little bit in Ukraine. And it took uh, decades in the Middle East as well as in, in uh, uh, you know, Vietnam to, to finally wise up and quit doing this. But there were rules about it. It was the breaking of the economic laws. Economic laws are very, very powerful. So, yes, there's a lot of evil done when they control the money and they become the counterfeiters. But it won't last. And... Uh, then, then, the, then that is expressed by higher prices, and the people don't like that, and they wake up and know something has to be done. But that requires to get them to do the right thing. That requires on our part and others to make sure that the people themselves know what you have to do. And if you have to cut spending to save the country and save the economy, you better understand why it's done. So that's an educational matter, and we try our best to get involved in that as well. Chris? Very good, Dr. Paul. Yes. Um, empires, like you've uh, mentioned, they live on mountains of lies. You know, the more power that exists, the bigger the lies you, you must have in order to maintain it. Uh, because power, to the extent that it exists, needs to be cent decentralized, localized. You know, I, as you know, if I'm the head of my household, that's a big enough job for me. But if you tell me I have to be the head of all the households down my street and in another city and in another state, I'm going to need some big lies to convince these people that I'm in charge of, you know, of their lives. You know, so you, you need a big web of lies in order to maintain it. Our government, unfortunately, over the last hundred years, uh, has become the uh, global busybody. It, it deems itself the arbiter uh, around the world. And predictably, everything is failing around it. You know, even in foreign policy, failed wars, uh, they're endless. They keep just one piling after another. The currency is failing. Inflation is getting out of hand. And if they keep printing, it'll really get out of hand. Our cities are a total mess. I, you know, I live an hour from a city. I don't even go there anymore. 
uh, there's moral failure with the people. That's quite obvious. Uh, just go on to social media and, and see how people speak to one another, and you'll see the moral failure. Legal failure. We have two-tiered legal systems. Some people, uh, you know, ha have to obey the law, and some don't. Uh, there's trust, failure and trust in the media. You know, to anybody who still puts that TV on, you really, you really have to trust them. Uh, with, there's medical you know, failure with COVID, just the lies there. Education, school, we could go on and on and on. And eventually the people, they become numb to it. It starts to lo lose its potency, all the lies. They, they could speak all the lies that they want. And that's what happened with the Soviets. Nobody believed them anymore. And that was the beginning of the end. <laughs> so that's in our future at some point. Let's just hope the end was as peaceful as it was for the Soviets. Yes, and I think the things that you mentioned, the founders were very much aware of it and even warned us, yes, uh, uh, we're trying to give our country a republic, and, uh, they, and they even expressed the uh, caution they had because, you, you know, if the people aren't moral and they don't follow a higher law, it, it won't work. And I think there was a time in our history where there was a lot more emphasis and a lot more respect for a higher law, and that has created a tremendous void that we have now. Now because we drifted away f from this higher law by individuals as well as our government and we have have this uh, real mess but what does it do it creates a void out there uh, who who should be guiding us you know who, who should be setting the rules and we certainly can't let the people set the rules is the con is the conclusion of many and they think only the, guy, the people aren't capable of doing it that's why we have to have the government but we're in the interim here and they're trying to figure out what to happen, but there's still a void there. And it's, it is a, a, a transition from once where there was more respect, uh, you, you know, for uh, morality and law and honesty and money and this sort of thing. So this, uh, this has uh, gone on, but the void is going to be and is in the, pro and is in the process right now of being filled by something. And the word that I use to best describe all the nonsense going on and all the idiocies that going on is wokeism and polygenderism and all of this stuff. You know, it's, it's bad enough what uh, giving the uh, authority to get the counterfeit of money and do all the evil that way with the wars and the welfare and all the harm they do. But uh, this is going, uh, it's getting much worse, but it's also waking up a lot of people, so we have to, have to realize that. But uh, the, wo the position of wo wokeism uh, means that they, uh, they, they are going to be indoctrinated by, you know, by, by the government authoritarians, not by voluntarism. There is the re rejection of uh, authoritarianism versus uh, vol voluntarism. And uh, those who don't like volunteerism, they say, well, some people won't do the right thing. They might not take care of themselves. They might not be responsible. They, uh, they might not uh, understand uh, the uh, whole, whole idea of meritocracy. And then somebody has to take care of them. So, so they use that as the excuse, but they'll never think, well, what if you get these clowns in government <laughs> and, they, and they're going to take care of us? Oh, yes, we're going to have a very fair tax code and we're going to do this and make sure they behave themselves, make sure their habits are proper and make sure they spend their money all right. We need more economic planning and we don't want any privately counterfeiting money, but uh, we want a monopoly control of that. So, so it goes on and on and, and, and they do this, but they're fill, filling the void but it, it's it's not going it's not going to work because it's so so much nonsense one of the things that drives a lot of people nuts and it bugs me too and that is that this DEI approach and that is uh, that is uh, they have uh, you know, you know uh, d d dignity and uh, equity and inclusiveness, and those are the rules. But the government sets up the rules on what you have to do. That's social control at the height, economic control at the worst. And, uh, but they do this because they do it in moral terms, because people are hurting. 
We've heard that before. People are hungry and there's people around the world that need us to bring about peace. And that's why we're in 120 countries aggravating war. And that's, that's the real tragedy. So all this nonsense and these, uh, this rule making uh, is not going to work. There should be rules, uh, you know, in a free society. And that rule is rather simple. And that is uh, you can't hurt anybody. And, uh, and yet that's exactly what the government does. They eliminate the voluntarism and let the government have the control where they can decide what's right. And they might say, well, there's been too much shooting here. I think we, we, it might turn out that people shoot each other. We can't allow them to defend themselves at all. So they have all this rationale and they always want to grab the moral high ground. And uh, it, it, it does influence a lot of people. And that's why we hear, you know, socially or economically or internationally, it's the people just, you know, get supporters from that because it sounds so good and they might be a participant in it. Maybe they're in a the military industrial complex. Oh boy, this is good for money. We can make money and we'll be moral because the government is uh, authorizing this and we're, we're the bene we will uh, be the uh, benefactors, but we will also be the people that will make sure that we live in this wonderful society. It's a choice between authoritarianism and voluntarism and uh, people being left alone, you know, they will use the method of how people get ahead is through merit, how they do things. Do they follow the rules? Are they honest? And that is what it makes society a much better society rather than saying what we need is more authoritarianism from the government, no more rules. And just think of all the pages of regulations uh, that we have uh, at the federal level. And uh, the people who uh, campaign for getting rid of them, they, they never reduce the number of pages in the federal register. So, uh, so someday there's a lot of people now are sick and tired of it and they're starting to avoid them and ignore them. 80% of the people now don't trust what the government tells us. Those are healthy trends because the people will finally wake up. Well, if we're not going to depend on our government, what are we going to depend on? And it, as far as I'm concerned, the only option we should have is promoting the cause of liberty. Chris? Excellent, Dr. Paul. I'll finish up. Yes, uh, there is a silver lining to all this. Even though we're surrounded by lies, there is a grand opportunity in front of us, and that is the communication technologies that exist, decentralized information. You know, when my, I, I remember hearing from my grandparents how it was with the TV. There was three channels. They tell you what it was. This is how it is. You know, and if they wanted a war, they, they put it on the television. All right, let's go. That's it. There was no questioning because how are you going to question it? You had no access to anything. And even in my, uh, when I was younger, it was very similar. You know, it wasn't like with my grandparents, but the TV was the monopoly. And that is gone. You look at younger kids today, they don't even know what a TV is. They don't know channels picking what's on TV guides. They have no idea about this stuff and don't care. And this is the silver lining. Information and communication today is decentralized. You can choose where you want to get your information. Right now, there are people <laughs> watching us. They want to get information from us, and thank you. Uh, but it's decentralized. You know, wouldn't the politicians today, and you can see it, you can see how they're trying to, uh, to condemn free speech. They would love it if they just had those three channels again. But that's gone, and it's not coming back. And that is, you know, and that qu it quickly uh, throws a monkey wrench into any plans that they have because there are people with cameras in their pockets, taking videos, taking pictures, saying what's happening on the ground, and the government can't keep up. They can't, the lies are, are debunked immediately. This is all good stuff. And, uh, you know, so that's the silver lining. And that's how ultimately freedom and liberty will prevail. Wonderful. You know, the uh, uh, history of our country was based, matter of fact, uh, the Wealth of Nations was written near that time of our Declaration of Independence. And Adam Smith wrote this. And he's known for uh, devising a theory of the invisible hand. And uh, actually, <clears throat> over the years, I sort of uh, clarified my understanding of the invis invisible hand <clears throat> because it makes sense. You know, if people can do what they want, there will be, it, it will uh, spread and people will want to mimic and this sort of thing. But, you know, when you read about the invisible hand, 
uh, the real effort he was making there is that if the invisible hand, uh, people would say, oh, that's just selfishness. You're just taking care of yourself, you know, and you're making more money than the people who won't work hard. And so it was a moral issue of saying, well, the invisible hand, you know, uh, isn't, you know, it, it does other things too. But they, uh, they thought this was just, and, and, and Adam Smith was writing to say that uh, that is not the point. The real, the real point is, is that if, you, if you're in a free society and you live up to rules and you don't hurt people and you're successful by satisfying customers and you make a lot of money, that uh, the, uh, the invisible hand uh, means that uh, other people aren't hurt. Other people are helped, helped by this. And it, it's, it ha doesn't have to be that that wasn't the initial plan, but that's really the invisible hand, that people are actually helped by this and there was, is no authoritarianism all based on, on, on liberty. So this, this is something that uh, people, uh, you know, have thought about for a long time, and uh, we we think that uh, the uh, uh, vis uh, the invisible hand is something that is static. But no, the, the invisible hand morphs into something else, and that's what we're dealing with right now. I think it morphs into a visible uh, a visible hammer, and it, it's uh, it's interesting that the symbol of, of communism, a hammer and sickle. Uh, I, I suspect when they did that, the the uh, idea was to make it look they were sympathetic to working people and they were confused on their economics. But the hammer and sickle is literally the hammer. I mean, we, we have a hammer by the government and they're the ones who come in and you, you get hammered into that, following all these rules. And uh, it, it is not, uh, so the visible hammer is a much worse way to go than the invisible hand of freedom. And that is what we want to try to achieve and do our best to uh, spread the message. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.